every brand constantly needs to reinvent, but you don't reinvent by abandoning the past. You take the history and heritage and cherish that and you evolve it because nobody can stand still. The Harley-Davidson brand sits in a category all its own, from the distinct sound of its engine and the smell of leather to the iconic artwork that spans its 120-year history. The brand speaks not only to what it means to ride a motorcycle, a feeling of freedom and belonging, but to many, it's the ultimate expression of what it means to be American. Jochen Zeitz is an unusual choice to lead Harley-Davidson. He's German, he's an outspoken climate activist, and he spent most of his career at Shoemaker Puma, where he turned around a once floundering company to be one of the world's leading sports brands. Yet, since taking the helm of Harley-Davidson in March of 2020, just as the COVID-19 pandemic was shutting down assembly lines and sending hog shares plummeting, Jochen has managed to steer the company into improved profitability and into a new era. Marked by the launch of an all-new electric motorcycle company and the historic decision to grant stock options to workers on the factory line. As an analyst who covers global autos and shared mobility, I just had to learn more about Jochen and his vision for what may be the toughest challenge of his career, ensuring an American legend can remain relevant without swerving too far from what made it a success for more than a century. Jochen, thanks for taking time out of your schedule and bringing us into this sanctuary of the American soul. Every time I come to the museum, it's just an overwhelming experience, yeah. really. How would you describe the riding experience for you? It's always difficult to describe it because you actually have to experience. It's mm -hmm. exhilarating, it's, it's, it's an adventure, it's, it frees your mind. If, you know, if I have a full head of things that I wrestle with, or, you know, getting on the bike and just forgetting all about it and riding through beautiful landscapes in America, I mean, there's nothing better than that. You're a former shoe salesman. <laughs> kind of. From Mannheim, Germany, who <laughs> preserves wildlife and produces films. How did you get to be running Harley Davidson? From my days as a young kid and teenager, I always had that fascination for America, actually, mm -hmm. and also for such a uber brand that Harley Davidson is. I'm a brand builder and I love brands, and, and there are very few brands that come even close to Harley Davidson. You first made your mark at Puma, where you were the youngest CEO of a German publicly traded company. So what did you learn from that experience and how does it apply to Harley Davidson? Well, I, I certainly learned never to give up. You know, I took over a company that was bankrupt on paper, had lost money for eight consecutive years. It was very German centric. There was nothing international about the brand. The, the brand, you know, was in a bad state. It was very undesirable. I remember there was a German magazine that wrote, he's going to crumble under the pressure and will never make it. The thing that really I, I remember most was never to give up and believe in your strategy and have a great team. I had a fantastic team that stuck with me the entire time and, uh, and we made it happen. You joined Harley's board in 2011 and became CEO in 2020. What moment did you realize that things really needed to change? When you're on the board, it's like being in a plane that flies 30,000 feet high mm -hmm. and you look down and it seems okay. And once you land and you're involved in the day to day and you're really in the trenches, you realize what's working, what's not working. So that gap, you can't really understand until you are CEO or essentially in charge of the business. So there was a you know, big learning, lots of surprises, but incredibly critical moment in the history of the company, considering that when I took the job, we knew that we we're about to close the factory and would have to raise you know, a couple of billion dollars quickly to make sure we had enough cash flow to go through the pandemic, not knowing when we would be able to uh, build motorcycles again. Were there some aspects of the pandemic that helped you begin the transformation and the recovery a bit faster than otherwise? You know, a crisis is always an opportunity. And for me, it was the opportunity to then also change a lot of the things that I realized we're not where they should be. So I think that the pressure on the business, on the company, on the employees was so much higher. So that was the chance to say, let's get this over with. Let's do what we have to do. The company had been restructured three years in a row and you know, employees were tired, people were unhappy and, and they didn't want another restructuring. I said, look, I, I promise you one thing, this is it. We'll do mm -hmm. this right. 
set up a, a good foundation for the business to be profitable and healthy and uh, we're going to hit our numbers and we were able to keep that promise. If you look over decades, average age of rider introduced to the sport and average age of riders has been rising. The company's initial response to that was to expand to younger riders and bring forward lower priced bikes and consequently margins collapsed. Where did it all go wrong? Well, we tried to do too many things that eventually had no path to profitability mm -hmm. and at the same time actually forgetting to invest in your core categories, in your core business, in your core riders, and, and you can't do that. I mean, every brand has to maintain its core while it ventures out and expands into new fields. And that was the flaw of the strategy. But the reality is, you know, every brand, every year needs to excite new customers. Mm -hmm. Customers age all the time. Opening that door to, you know, new potential riders is really critical, just like every brand has to excite the next generation. It's nothing new. You can never rely on, you know, one particular segment. You have to constantly excite new customers to come into your brand. It's an art form, right? I mean, it's freedom of expression of our riders that they take the bike and it's a canvas that you build what you identify with, what you want to express. I don't know another brand that, that can do that as successfully as Harley Davidson has done it. And there's been a big push in this country for onshoring manufacturing. Almost all of your bikes are made in the USA. Well, we've always been here. All our bikes that we sell in America are made in America. Mm -hmm. It's not the robots that are doing all the work. It's the folks that have been with the company for 10, 20, 30 years, some third generation in our factories. I mean, that is an incredible asset and, and that we can be incredibly proud of. What's the message that you have for your nearly 6,000 employees at the company for where you're going? You know, building our bikes in America is a very important factor and we are an American icon, we're an American brand and we want to keep it that way. When I started, morale was very low. There was no sort of culture of winning. And then there was COVID and all the fear that, that came along with that, that we would have yeah. to cut not just costs, but staff as well. We had to set up a new foundation based on which we could then rebuild the business. This is my fourth year and we've hit all our numbers despite all the uncertainties we had, despite all the challenges we've had. There was a lot of outreach going on and say, look, this is what went wrong. This is what we're doing. And we think this is right strategy. Obviously, it takes a bit of time to rebuild credibility because they've heard it before. And then I wanted everybody to be an owner in the company. We did something that was very unique by making everybody, including the folks that work in the factory, shareholders. But I said, we win, everyone should win. It's not just management, it's not just senior leadership. Does Harley-Davidson need to be reinvented? You can't apply the same tools that you've applied in the past into the future, but the, the core of the brand that you need to protect and, uh, and evolve in a positive way, and that's what we're trying to do. Does the company need to grow in order to be successful? Yeah, I mean, eventually, absolutely, every business should grow, but you can't grow just for the sake of growing. And mm -hmm. what we needed to do is to focus on the things that really mattered most. We exited markets, uh, 39 markets, as part of the rewire in 2020 um, because they were not profitable markets and they didn't have a path to profitability. And so it, in a way, it's a fitness program where you first lose weight and that's not a bad thing because it makes you healthier. Our profit margins are up uh, six percentage points uh, compared to 2017. We have the highest uh, operating income we've had since then, selling 20,000 less motorcycles. Eventually, of course, we want to grow our business and we want to do that with motorcycles, but also by expanding into a business that is way uh, under leveraged and that's the apparel business. And the world is big. Uh, there's America, there's the Asian markets, there's the European markets. And if we focus on those markets, there's also an opportunity to grow our business. Help me connect Harley Davidson with sustainability. The question is how you define sustainability. Okay. If, we, if we care for our community, we care for our employees, we care about the planet because we, you know, we ride in nature and we care for our shareholders. That's the profit part of people, planet and profit. So in a, in a way that is to me sustainability. And if you want to be successful, you have to think long term. We, we can't talk about sustainability without talking about Livewire, your electric motorcycle division, which you spun off late last year. Why does Livewire have a better chance of being independent 
than part of the Harley mothership. I didn't want it to be an afterthought, right? I mean, again, when you focus your business on your core and then you are also doing electric, that would not have worked, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And, and the reality is that the electric motorcycle technology is not at a place where you could actually electrify big bikes. We believe, I believe that there are customers out there that want an electric motorcycle, but they might not want it from Harley, but they might want it from a brand that is part of the lineage of Harley Davidson. And then the agility of a startup and the metrics that investors would apply to a startup are very different to a traditional company that's been around for 120 years. And eventually the technology will be developed uh, that Harley Davidson can also have an electric motorcycle, but with the look, sound and feel of a Harley Davidson, that's really the goal. There's a lot of other manufacturing companies, auto companies, for example, that think they can do both. Why was that so difficult? Well, it's technology primarily because you cannot put uh, an electric engine into a motorcycle that is, you know, 1250 equivalent CC that you go mm -hmm. touring with for three or four hours and then stop and, and refuel. And I want to do this by focusing on Livewire to do that right. Harley can also learn from that and the other way around because Livewire benefits from the infrastructure from Harley Davidson. We, we share testing facilities and we constantly inspire each other, but with separate teams and not just you know, sort of all of them mingled together. And does it have to fund itself or, you know, his big, big daddy Harley kind of have help out when needed? <laughs> well, we own 90% of it mm -hmm. and, and we continue to support it. And uh, it's a public company now, but just like every kid, it needs to stand on its own feet at some <laughs> Get point. Get out of the house at some point. <laughs> at some point, <laughs> exactly. Pay your own bills. The sound of a Harley Davidson engine is so distinctive that you even try to trademark it. Mm -hmm. Can a Harley Davidson be a Harley Davidson without an engine note? It's about the look, it's mm -hmm. about the sound, and it's about the feel. I think that's what Harley Davidson is all about. We will find a way to make <laughs> sure that we retain the look, sound, and feel that made Harley what it has become uh -huh. and evolve it and, and get our customers happy. And let's say we're having this discussion in the year 2030. Okay. What are the biggest changes and how would you measure success for shareholders? I mean, 2030, that we should be completing that total transformation mm -hmm. of the company and uh, we should be growing, profitably growing as a business for sure. There's no question about it. Apparel should be a, a business that is well over a billion dollars um, and parts and accessories the same. And the experience that customers will get with Harley Davidson as a brand will be much broader than it is today. And it's a more diverse uh, customer base that is, consists of our traditional core riders, but also just fans and dreamers. That, and we are certainly gonna be more global than we are today. Jochen, how did the social turmoil in this country over the last few years make things harder or at least more complicated as a CEO? Well, I think first you have to accept you know, different people's viewpoints. Mm -hmm. uh, that we are an inclusive brand. I mean, our slogan is united we ride, not divided we ride. What we can offer as a brand is unity. Once you experience the riding community, you realize how diverse it is. Wherever you come from, whatever you believe, it doesn't really matter once you ride a Harley Davidson. I think that's the great thing about a brand that can actually bring people together rather than divide them. And, and that's what we want to stand for. That's what our riders stand for. And that's what made, makes us one of the greatest brands in the world. That's the beauty of, of a brand like Harley Davidson. It never goes out of fashion because it's the heritage, the history that people want to preserve for mm -hmm. the future. And that's our customers.